this grandparent's like, yeah, he's doing all right. He already has one. Oh, yeah, she is the one. She's like, I told you. Oh. Doing stadiums in this.
evening. Let's begin. 271. 271. I belong to the king. Let's all stand, shall we? 271. On the second, I belong to the king, and he loves me. wants any salt I have a whole bunch up here if you'd like a handful of it at really free I'll pour it it's got the pourer thing on it if you open your hand I can still taste it from Sunday is it savory uh yeah very it hasn't lost its savor no okay. no it's not it's not spired it's good till October 30th 2027 how many of you think we'll be here in 2027 Probably not, but how many, how many of you want to be? I don't know. I don't know. That's four years away. Wow. Can we pray? Pray with us. Father, we pray that you'll get glory tonight. Thank you that the reason that we come here and sing and give and do all we do is because you saved us. And so we have no reason. To be down, downhearted, downcast, we have no reason. Lord, we trust you. We know what you can do. You saved us. We're going to heaven. We want to rejoice in that. You said, don't, don't get excited. You told the disciples, don't get excited if you can do miracles. Get excited that your name is written in heaven. So, God, that's what we're going to do. Help these young people to see the most important thing in life is to have their name written in heaven. Work on them. Challenge them. Challenge the teenagers. I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Page 417. He cares for you. Page 417.
If you have a prayer list, would you grab that? You're going to need the whole backside to add some requests. I'm telling these people, you, we don't have any room for anybody to feel bad. So if you don't feel good, get well, because we're out of room. But if you're on the prayer list, would you? I use the top. I've added some things at the top. I've made some stars. Would you do that? We, we're just been a rough week. Been a rough week. Would you add Janie's mom? Janie Lykoff's mom had surgery, and she just texted, said, Mom's on her way home. Everything went well. She had some heart issues. So would you continue to pray for her mom and her recovery? That's where they're at. Jim Hurt's son. Jim Hurt has a son, Brandon. Brandon had emergency surgery. If you would pray for him, that is Jim's son, Brandon. Linda Ritter broke her foot. I guess Ron is that hard that when she kicked him. I mean, why? I don't believe. Look, I've been doing this too long to believe these stories. I know what happens at home. I know how Amy and I go at it. Pray for her. Pray for her. She, you know, Two problems with Linda. She's too busy. And she'll be upset if she can't be busy. So pray for her. She'll need that. Pray for her. Pray for Ron. Oh, let's see. Larry McFarland still having problems under cancer. They don't think it's cancer-related, do they? They do. They think his swallowing problem is cancer-related. So if you would put a note, if you could fit it in somewhere, put two stars next to Gary Gilmore. Gary Gilmore has canceled his meetings. He's home. He He's not doing well. Uh, just can't sleep. He's very weak. He's not quite sure what's going on. He's got to figure it out. So, of course, he had cancer a couple of different times, and they treated it. But just pray real hard for him, would you? Janine, go, well, no, wait, go to the health second column. Put a line under, go down a few names, Jeff and Sandra You, Jeff's doing okay. Sandra isn't. Pray hard for her. Can't even come. Very weak, same thing, having some issues wants to come, and I know I can see by your face some of you are going, who is that? That's what we had the fellowship song. Mm -hmm. So you'll get around and learn people. So um, just pray for her if you would, and then go down just past the middle, Lisa McFarland. She was at the vet getting a checkup. Is she watching? It would be fun. She's if, sure she's yeah, if she's yeah. watching, yeah. She goes to the vet. Lisa McFarland does, because some of you were giving me that look like. They took their dog to the vet. Something happened. She had an accident. She fell there. And so she's nothing broken, but she's bruised. As far as we know. Okay. Pray for her. She's there under psoriasis. She's having that issue. But would you just maybe put a star and add next to that that she fell? And then Janine Robleski having a lot of heart. She had a heart valve replacement. They want to do it again. They're having troubles deciding how to do it. She got a great, she got the same doctor that John Sheets had, so she's excited. But something's not easy. So will you pray for her real hard? She's in a wheelchair. She can't breathe. She... Uh, just no energy, it, that her heart isn't working right. So, yes? Just a reminder, John's wasn't easy either. No, John's was not easy, and and he's still here. So so she needs, she needs, God can do it. I had a missionary call today. He called me the other day, and I couldn't get back to him, and he said, just call me when you can. I need prayer. So I prayed really hard, and I got back to him today, and that's typical for me. I, you know. I don't like people, and I don't like to talk, so I don't get on the phone much. But So I finally got back to him, and uh, he said, God answered prayer. And uh, I said, well, I prayed. I didn't know what I was praying about, but God did. So God was able to do it. So that's exciting. And then for Kevin Snyder, will you pray real hard for him? Some more tests? Is there more tests? Okay. 
They think it's your heart. They don't think it's your wife. He's a smart man. <laughs> yeah, I know. See that lovingly look he had in his eye. Pray for Kevin's heart. Would you that half of it's not doing its job? Got to God, God made it. God, that's not that's not for God, is it? I, often when they don't let me much anymore, when I used to be able to go to the hospital and pray with people, especially when I would go like to the surgical clinics, they would go, "How can we help you? Are you scheduled for a surgery? No, I'm here to pray with someone. You for what? You want to say, you know, you people aren't God." And we want God to work. And so they finally just give in to me because I don't just leave. I say, all I want to do is just go back there and pray with them because that's what I do. Could I do that? Well, I guess nobody else does that. So I always respond, well, I'm nobody else. Wait, I'm no nobody. Wait, I'm nobody else. I'm no, no, I'm not nobody else. I'll work on that. Anyway, so... um, I went to South Bend Clinic one time and prayed with somebody. And they have that, whatever you call it, drive through surgery, in and out surgery. And uh, it, that, like, I, you know, I, I, I say I'm here to pray with so-and-so. They hear, well, I can't disclose that information. So I always say, well, I know they're here because they asked me to come because they're having surgery, and I came to pray with them. And they look at me like I have a bomb strapped to my body. And I go, really? All I want to do is pray with them. Well, I'll have to get my supervisor. Listen to me. They, that, yeah, that, they're crazy. They, they don't think about God. They don't want God. They don't want them there, you know. So we need to pray for all these folks. And then. We're someday in May, we think. I have it on my phone. The last one, Chris Kindig, that is Lil Westfall's grandson. He's having foot surgery. May, just start praying now, and when we get the date, we'll, we'll get it to you. But that's their grandson. He's having surgery, so pray about that, would you? The ushers are going to come, and uh, I, I don't fall into sin. I mean, I sin. Hey, listen to me. I sin. Okay? If you don't think I do, talk to Amy. I usually don't fall into it. I mean, thank God, right? We are more than conquerors. I, I, I don't struggle with big, I struggle with sin, not big sin. I fall into distraction. I easily get distracted. Things in here, things you're doing, things I hear, things I think I see. Just all kinds of junk. It's just distracting. And I think the Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about. I know the verse. Just be patient. With so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside. Do you know this verse? Every weight and the sin. Sin is easy. It's them weights. And I don't know what your weight is, but let me tell you one of mine. Distractions. The government trying to gouge us for taxes. I've fought this fight already. When I'm coming, they, I hear them go, oh, no. Because I go in and go, hey. I mean, I don't know how you do it, so I just go, hey, we're a church. We don't pay taxes. I filled the forms out. What's going on? Well, so here they gouge us again. They want thousands of dollars. Two words. Uh-uh. 
Uh uh-uh. That could lead me to sin, but right now it's leading me to have this weight. The weight of distraction. Let us lay aside every weight. I wish you didn't say every. Because I'd like to keep some of them. And the sin which doth so easily, you know the verse? And let us run with haste. My version. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us. <laughs> I love the Bible. I just don't like living it. I'm just, you know, man, alive. Lord, just can't you. He's always testing me. Always saying, hey, hey, hey. You think you're there? You're not. Watch this. I think God goes, watch this. Watch this. And so we have to say, okay, Lord. We're going to trust you and and do it the right way. Right? Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. And those witnesses isn't so much that they're looking at us, but they're witnesses to God's goodness and grace when we're going through a hard time. That we can say, Hebrews 11, look what they did. Right? Look what they did. Look how they handled it. God told Noah to build an ark. He didn't say, that's crazy. He did it. God told Abraham, leave your country. Abraham didn't say, that's crazy. He did it. And all those people he asked to die for him, to stand up and lose their lives. They didn't say, no way. They said, it'll be worth it. Those are the witnesses. Sing. That's why we run with patience. That's why we say, hey, whatever weight, whatever sin's there, we're going to take the offering and go. Let's go get ice cream because that's you got enough preaching, right? Not, not really. Let's pray. Father, please answer prayer. You can. You do. How encouraging, God. I love to hear people say, man, I didn't know what. And I didn't know what would happen. I didn't know what to do and didn't know how it turned out. And, and like the one today and God, they said it, it, it turned out God answered prayer. Thank you, God. So uh, here we are begging you uh, for every person that we're praying for that's lost. The biggest problem a person has is not cancer, is not heart problems, is not broken bones, is not anything compared to being lost and going to hell forever. So we pray that these people on this list who need salvation, that we will be very, very fervent urgent, diligent to pray for their salvation. We need to hear that they got saved. We need to see that that you can save them. We know you can, but we need to see it. We need to rejoice in it. So please, Lord, for these dear folks that we want to see get born again, oh, dear Lord, please save them. Uh, I pray, uh, Heavenly Father, for Brandon Hurt as he recovers from surgery. I pray for Janie's mom as she recovers from surgery. I pray that Linda Ritter will get stronger. I pray she won't have to have surgery. I pray that it will just mend and everything will heal up quickly, give her strength, give her strength through her MS, give her strength, God, through now this time of running her race with patience. Lord, I pray for Larry and Lisa McFarland who are now in their own battles. They need help. I pray for Brother Gilmore, God. What a, what a precious servant of yours. And we don't like what's happening, but we like that you know what you're doing. And we love you and trust you and pray. He'll have strength, that you'll meet his needs, that you'll uh, just give whoever uh, helps him wisdom. We pray, dear Lord, for Janine, that her heart would heal up. I don't know if you want to do that. I know you can. I know you can, Lord. There's no doubt in my mind. You can. I know you can. And if you would choose to do that, do that. But give her wisdom as she now pursues what to do, when to do it. And uh, give the doctors wisdom as they uh, figure out the best time and the best way to help her. I pray for Kevin. I pray for the healing of his heart. And we know that for you, that's just nothing. uh, For you to heal his heart is for, like, us to take a breath. It just, we just do it. It happens. And, Lord, I pray you'll give him strength, give him his 
uh, capacity that he needs uh, to get well and, and strengthen him and strengthen him mentally through this. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for loving us, for saving us. And we're asking you to just show us how to, to trust you. Show us how to pray. We don't want to pray selfishly, but we want to pray believing. We don't want to just say, well, we don't know. You do what you want. We know, God, what, what we want, and we want exactly what you want. And you said if we could believe and ask that you do it. So that's, that's why we're coming. That's our motivation. We're motivated to trust you to give strength and healing and whatever else you want to do. Lord, lessons. There are so many lessons in what we go through. We want you to be magnified and glorified as we go through them. Bless this night. Bless every young person. Lord, I pray that they'll hear the gospel, that they'll get saved. You, you speak to them about salvation. Speak to the teenagers, Lord. May they hear the gospel. May they trust Christ. May they be challenged. And, Lord, that isn't always us. That isn't us saying it right. That's you working in the heart. So please work in hearts. Work in the hearts in this room. Work in the young people in the walnut. Work in the teenagers. Excuse me, in the youth center, may they uh, see very plainly what a Christian is, what, what godliness is. I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. That's what we're singing, page 419. 419, God will take care of you. Let's all stand, shall we? Be not dismayed, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love. Second Simon chapter three. Second Simon. Oh, I mean Peter. Say how many of you knew that? Oh, some of you theologians. Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three. We ran my uncle who watches all the time, Jim's not doing real well. He's 88. He's got stuff going on. He begged us to come. So we ran over there Monday night, Tuesday morning, came home yesterday. I didn't want to be gone. Got a lot going on. I'm zooming home, and I cross the Ohio line. I get into Indiana. And I saw a state policemen sitting on Indiana, sitting on the side. I, but I saw people passing me. 
there was a guy tailing me, so I turned, moved over, and he zoomed past me. Boy, I saw the cop come out. I'm yelling. Amy's, you know, in and out. Get him. Get him. So he cuts right behind me, turns his lights on. I said, wake up. We're being pulled over. After it was all done, I said, I, I said, was that the weirdest thing? I said, remember when we used to get pulled over and it was just like he's going to shoot us, we're going to die. I said, this was like, oh, big deal. Hurry up. So, of course, he comes to Amy's side. He goes, hello. I go, hello. He goes, you know you were speeding? I said, yeah. He goes, you know how fast you were going? I said, I wasn't going as fast as everybody else. He said, yeah, but you know you were speeding. It's like, I've been driving since before you were born. I didn't say that. I said, I, honestly, no. I said, I'm in a hurry to get home. And I could have gone faster, but I was kind of keeping up with everybody. He said, oh, okay, give me your license and registration. Okay. So Amy goes, are you going to tell him about Stephen? I said, no. That's embarrassing. So he comes, you know, it's a long time. You know, you're waiting and you think. But, but really, it was like, I don't know if it was a piece of God or what. But he came back and he goes, I'm giving you a warning. I said, thank you. He said, you'll be careful. I said, yes, I will. I said, by the way. He said, yeah. I said, I have a son who's a chief of police. He said, you do? I said, yes. He said, where? I said, Napanee. He said, I'm not familiar with that. I said, really? He goes, no. And he goes, oh. And he gave me the look like, boy, you are dumb. So I just said, I promise I'll be careful. I promise. I, I want to get home. I'll be careful. He said, have a great day. I said, okay, good. So Amy said, when was the last time you got pulled over? I said, when we were coming home from church 40 years ago in Milwaukee, and the cop thought I was drunk. I was falling asleep and wavering. And she said, I think it was the last time. I mean, I speed all the time. I just don't get caught. What do you want me to say? Huh? I mean, a mile over is speeding, right? I try to go the speed limit. So anybody I've told that, they go, you? You? Because I missed her, you know. Amy's got pulled over more than me. In fact, she was following Stephen one time, and she got pulled over, and he didn't. And he was in front of her going faster. So the moral of the story is go as fast as you can until you see a cop and then slow down because he'll pull you over. Second Peter chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 3. Hey, if the biggest, you know, I want to tell this cop, this ticket's nothing. Let me tell you about some issues. You know what I mean? We're talking about all of you and praying for you, and I'm thinking, you know, me speeding, getting a ticket, money. Thank God, thank God, listen, thank God that, we deserve worse. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. Let's take the time, can we? Read all of it, the whole chapter. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3. This second epistle, beloved, verse 1, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. That's me. That's my motto. I think more Christians need to be reminded and stirred up. Verse 2, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. So would verse 2, would it be fair to say he's talking about the Bible? Right? Holy prophets, the writers, the authors, not the author, but God used these men. He said that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing, 
verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust. Scoffers sometimes are very subtle. They're not, you're, you're not, they're more tactful. I'd always heard some say that one of the ways the government would get the church is through taxing. They want to take away our tax-exempt status. They don't like that. They're scoffers. They don't stand in front of the church and rail, but they're against what we are, what we believe, what we say, what we do. Just like we are them. Our goal is to convert them. I don't know what their goal is. You know, I mean, they want us, they know we won't be converted to their uh, nutso ways. He says, knowing, verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. What do I want? What do I want? What's best for me? Don't we live in that kind of a time? Me, 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 me. Look at me. Do for me. I need, I need, I want. Verse 4 and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Isn't it interesting? Can I ask you an honest question? You don't have to be a theologian. And I share this with a lot of people. And men older, smarter, better than I agree. I never thought I would live in, in the days that we're living. When I used to hear, when I just got saved and I heard old people in their 60s talk like that. I thought, well, they all do that. You know, they all talk like that. Where is the promise of his coming? Is he coming? See, they're saying he's not here yet. He must not be coming. And it makes sense to them. And it makes sense humanly. But it's not true. Because he's coming. He's coming when he wants to come. He's coming how he wants to come. He's coming when he wants to come. Verse 4, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Verse 5, for this they willingly are ignorant of. Verse 5, See the word willingly? That means they want to be. They choose to be. It isn't something they didn't know. It's something they don't. Willingly ignorant. They don't want to know. They are willingly ignorant. That by the word of God. Verse 5. That by the word of God. You see, I, I want you to see. And we're going to make it through this. You go, you're going awful slow. You're reading the whole chapter. I got to get out of here by midnight. Notice so, verse 5, that by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby, verse 6, the world that then was being overflowed with water perished, verse 7, with the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. New thought, verse 8. But, beloved, be not ignorant. Verse 5, for this they willingly are ignorant of. So now he says in verse 8, beloved, 
be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. It's not spiritual to be literal about that verse. It's spiritual to say everything's in God's timing. I mean, I don't like that verse. I want God, I want God on my time. I said I want, but I know he won't. So I just have to go, God, God's timing is perfect. He's going to come back when he wants to come back. And if I live in a day when they call evil things good and good things evil, then it just proves he's right again, and I'm here to witness it. I just didn't want to be here in those days. Why? Because I don't want to suffer. I don't want to be persecuted. I don't want to be scoffed at. I don't want to be ridiculed, do you? I don't. I just want to live for God. Man, I just want to preach. I want to preach the gospel. I want to see people saved. Peter said, but beloved, verse 8, be not ignorant of this one thing. And, and the rest, of course, is God's timing. Why am I not getting better faster? Because you're not God. Why is this? Why are my relatives not being saved? Because you're not God. God does it in his time. Verse 8, be not ignorant of this one thing. You know why he says that? Because he knows we can handle one thing at a time. If he goes, look, there are 12 things you really need to know. What was number 9? What was number 7? What was number 11? But he says one thing. God's timing, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Isn't that great? We like the rest of the verse, but isn't that first part great? His promises are true, how he wants them. Anyway, the Lord is not slack, verse 9, concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Remember what he just said? Remember this one thing. It's God's timing. God's timing makes us patient. It makes us faithful. Some people ask me, I'm, I've been praying about this and God didn't do it. What, what's the answer? Well, there's no theological answer. The answer is because you're not God. God does what he wants, how he wants, when he wants. We just have to trust him. I called on him and he saved me. He didn't say, I'll give back to you. He saved me. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So now when we think of what God is doing and all the scoffers, and he says, hey, God, God is long-suffering. Maybe, maybe there's this gap. Maybe there's this time frame because there's other people that he wants. I have people in my life that I want to see saved. I don't know if you have people in your life, but I have people in my life. And as I read, be ready to be impressed. As I read eschatology, if you've heard the gospel in the tribulation, you're not going to get saved. So there are people that need to get saved now. Before the end. And even though he says, verse 3, knowing this verse, that there shall come in the last days. And boy, how people are going after those people. Maybe it is true. Maybe the Lord is. Maybe the Christians are wrong. Look how bad it is, and God hasn't come back for them yet. Maybe it is. Maybe it is all a big lie. Think what you want. I know he's coming back. I mean, what have they been thinking in these countries where people up to this state, China, where they're being martyred for their faith? What in the world are they thinking there? I mean, if we're thinking, I can't believe the Lord didn't come back yet. You imagine having church hiding in a cave, hoping that the cops don't come? We're not there yet. But we could be. You know that, right? 
say, well, Pastor, I don't want that. Me neither. So we got to be careful. Oh, I can't believe it's this bad. It could get worse. And it'll seem like a thousand years if it's only a day. Right? Verse 10. But, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Hey, I believe Peter. Peter had issues, but he was with God. He was led of God. Everything he's writing here, these are his last words, and then they crucify him upside down. I mean, he's in tune with God. And so he writes to them, and he says, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Got all your stuff. Doors are locked. House is locked up. Man, you can't wait to wake up and play with your stuff and look at your stuff and shine your stuff and wash your stuff and use your stuff. And then, boom, the thief comes in and takes it all. Peter says, hey, don't worry. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what anybody says because he's coming. And when he comes, they'll never know it. We're going to be gone, and a lot of people are going to be looking at themselves going, wow, it is true. It is true. Remember all them people that used to go to Lakeside? They don't meet much anymore. We'll be gone. Verse 10, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise. The elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein, the works that are there, shall be burned up. Seeing then, verse 11, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Note the word godliness. When Paul wrote to Timothy, can I read you just a couple of verses? Paul wrote to Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. He said, bodily exercise profiteth little. Amen. 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 Throw your, throw your, your treadmill away. Bodily exercise, he says, but godliness. But godliness is profitable unto all things. That's a great verse. Godliness is profitable in all things. Having the promise of life, watch this. Having the promise of life that now is, and of that which is to come. So godliness works now, and when you're in heaven. So what, what's the thought of the day? We better be godly. He gets on in verse 6 and he says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Verse 4, he's proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words. Whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising. Verse 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt mind, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. And then he says in verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. He says in verse 10, 1 Timothy 6, for the love of money, you know that one, don't you? The love of money is the root of all evil. Verse 11, but thou, O man of God, flee these things, follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Remember what he said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 5? When he said perilous times will come in the last days, Verse 2, 
Men should be lovers of their own self. Man, are we there? We are living in a day when people love themselves like nothing else. That's the first one. And then he goes on, of course. All those uh, uh, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient parents, unthankful, and holy, without natural affection, yep, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, verse 5, having a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof from such, turn away. We got to finish reading this chapter. He said, Second Peter chapter three. Verse fourteen, wherefore? Beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot, blameless. An account of the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul also, according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, and also, as also, verse 16, in all his epistles, speaking in them of those things in which are some things hard to be understood. Well, I'm glad Peter said that. Peter didn't say, I get everything Paul said. What did he say there? He said, sometimes he talks, I don't understand it. Did you ever read the Bible and go, I don't understand that? Hey, that's what Peter said about Paul. And I mean, remember when Paul told Peter off? There was that time that Paul said to Peter, man, you're a hypocrite. You're living like a Jew when they're around, when the Gentiles are around, you're living like a Gentile. You, you, are, you are throwing them off. He used the word dissimulation. He said, you're throwing them off. Quit that. But now old Peter's just saying, I, you know, I knew what Paul meant when he said that. But boy, there's sometimes he says things, I don't get it. Verse 17, ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know these things before, beware lest any, lest ye also, being led away with the air of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. But, verse 18, grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory now and forever. Let me pray. Lord, help us see what we should see. It might be hard, might be tough, but God, we know that you can take the thought that we need, the encouragement we need, and help us to live another day for you. And we need to live several days, Lord willing. But today, Lord willing, you just uh, stir us up, remind us how we ought to live for you. I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you know the verse, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm glad I'm in Christ. Man, if I didn't have him going through stuff, wouldn't make it. Glad I can talk to him. I boy, anymore it's like I get to pray. I gotta pray. I just gotta I just pour it out to him. I mean he loved me, died for me. I can come to him and just say, God, you know this, help me with this, answer this prayer. I'm glad my past doesn't count. Wow. Woo! I'm glad my past doesn't count. Hey? Some of, you, some of you don't like me saved. Imagine me lost. I was really bad. I mean, there's, hey. I mean, I know, I'm, yeah, I know. Let's not go there. But God sees me as his child. You know what I like, though? Everything, 18 years, 18 years. I, I, I really, I can remember as a young kid doing wicked stuff. I mean, wicked. I wasn't just mischievous. I was wicked. I'm glad I didn't have to remember all that and confess them one by one. 
I'd still be praying trying to get saved. But when I saw that if I was in Christ, all, all those sins, all, all of that, every thought, every deed, every action, every bet, everything that I did, you know, my mom and dad, my sister, uh, my friends, all the carousing, all the getting in trouble, all the smart mouth back talk, drugs and booze, all that, Christ took that, buried it in the ground, put it in hell, and then came back to life. That's what Romans 6 is teaching. We're baptized with Christ. That means that everything that was on us, man, he buried and left there. Boy, it'd be nice if you could get in the baptistry tub and have everything washed away. But that happened spiritually. If any man be in Christ. There's an if. You've got to be in Christ. But the good part about that verse and, and what Peter's getting to is that every moment for us, every moment is new. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things, all things, all things. Things, read it, all things are become new. So every moment it's new. God doesn't go, you know, I've been thinking. When you were 12, that one's really bothering me. <laughs> Man, are you glad that God says no? Old things are passed away. That means he can't, that means God can't find them. Say, is that possible? It is. But every moment, we can live anew. We can live for him. We can honor him. We can grow in him. We can please him. We can trust him. I can never do enough to get into heaven. And even once I trusted Christ to get into heaven, there's not a certain thing or a certain amount of things that I have to do to keep me saved. I'm saved. Peter, Peter's last words, but grow in grace. I remind you, that's how we were saved. For by grace are you saved through faith. Right? Not of yourselves. It's the gift of God. Verse 9, Ephesians 2, not of works lest any man should boast. So now Peter says, hey, here, here's what I see. I've walked with Christ. I've listened to him. I saw the miracles. And you and I know that Peter had power. The Bible tells us he had power to raise people from the dead. I mean, would you say that? Don't forget me. Remember me, Peter? I raised people from the dead. I cast out devils. I remember me? Pentecost, hey. Thousands of people got saved. Don't forget me. What does he say? But you, and that's how verse 18 is directed, but you grow in grace. Keep growing. Don't quit growing. I've arrived. I'm smart enough. I'm old enough. No, no, no. Titus 3, 5 says, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing. Man, thank God for the washing. Let, let, when Peter talks about stirring up, verse 1, verse 2, be mindful. That's what he's talking, he's talking about. Don't forget where you came from. He doesn't say don't forget what you were. He says don't forget what you got saved out of. The washing, Titus 3, 5, the washing of regeneration. Regeneration means it's like you're, you're born again. Huh. Washing of regeneration. You've been regened. Regened. You have 
have God's G. G, not J. God doesn't wear jeans. Wears a robe or a suit. We've been re-jeans. God's jeans. I don't know how far back you can remember that you sinned, but I remember in kindergarten being dared to cut off a girl's hair. Don't dare me. I mean, now you can't, I'm saved. But when I'm five, a dumb little nut, Italian Polak sitting in kindergarten, trying to, you know, be big stuff, and the girl in front of me, her hair's down their back, and my buddy says, we had, remember them scissors? They didn't work. Little silver scissors, rounded points so we wouldn't run with them. He said, I bet you wouldn't cut her hair. I said, I bet I would. I grabbed it from the bottom where she wouldn't feel it. I didn't take a lot, just foot, foot and a half. Cut it, she never knew it. He says, I don't remember sinning before this. I'm sure I did. He says, I can't believe you did it. She turned around. What did he do? He said, he cut your hair. Man, was she upset. She couldn't even tell. Then she told the teacher. The teacher said, whatever she calls me, Pastor Ruli or whatever. <laughs> you cut her hair? I mean, I didn't have to say anything, right? My face gave me away. After that, it was nothing but a live of crime. But prior to that, man, all I remember is a lot of laying around. I sucked a bottle for a long time. I did. I mean, up until I was five, I just liked the bottle. I'm sorry. Some of you are disappointed in me. That I remember five going. I can remember in kindergarten, coming home from kindergarten, getting in my playpen and sucking a bottle. You got problems. I go to a psychiatrist for it. He's trying to help me. I wasn't in charge of my growth. I was just living. It's like Peter is saying, but grow. We're in charge of our growth. If there's something we're supposed to be doing that we know we ought to do, we ought to do it. And if there's something we ought not do, we better not do it. That's what this is about. Why? Because we have new genes. By the washing of regeneration, Titus 3, 5 says, and renewing of the Holy Ghost. God, God is there to make sure we do what we're supposed to do. But he won't overpower you. He won't fight you. You have to yield to him. Holy Spirit, what do you want? Hey, you say that mean it, he'll help you. You keep ignoring him. Keep being willfully ignorant, verse 5, or willingly ignorant. He'll let you go on your own till you mess up real bad and say, now what? We can never produce a Christian life. Listen to me. But once we become born again, from God, not us, not, not what we do, but washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Titus 3, 5. So Peter's saying, verse 17, 2 Peter 3, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before. Do we? Do we? We, we need to know it. 
We need to know what we need to do. Sing, he, verse 17. Beware, look at verse 17. Beware. Beware, lest ye also, ye also. Peter knows what it is to be led away. Hello? Doesn't he? Wouldn't you love to ask him? Aren't you going to ask him in heaven? Peter, how could you deny the Lord? Here's what he'll say. I can't believe I did that. Did he want to do it? Of course he wanted to because he decided it. Did the Lord beware him? Yeah. So he's saying, man, you, you got to be, look at verse 2, you got to be mindful. So I'm just trying to get you to remember stuff you already know. Beware, verse 17, lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. When I hear about a Christian that I thought would never fall, and then I hear that they fall, it listen, it just rocks my world. But I also know it could happen to me. I think Peter is trying to get us to see that we can't quit growing, knowing what's going to happen and knowing how we need strength and knowing we're going to meet the Lord. We, we can, can keep from falling. Fall, verse 17 says, beware so you don't fall. And, and boy, if we get unstable, that's when you fall. Guess who was a good little boy the rest of the way home after he got pulled over? Guess who was yelling at all the speeders? Yeah, yeah. Well, let me tell you, I forgot about that today. We need to remind ourselves. Hey, I didn't know you're supposed to go the speed limit. I'm in a hurry. I'm going to lie to the guy. Hey, my speedometer's broken. You know, hey, it's my medicine. I'm on special medicine, and it makes everything go backwards. You know, I was going 70. I thought I was going 7. I just said, man, I'm in a hurry to get home. He said, where were you? I said, Columbus, Ohio. He said, where are you going? I said, South Bend. And I was saying, you're keeping me from getting home. Hurry. Our main goal is that we should grow. If our kids aren't growing, it's a tragedy. Something's wrong if they're not growing up, if they're not being nourished. But it's worse when we're born of God and we're not growing spiritually. I was sharing earlier, I think someone tonight, I'm 65. I remember when I was 30. And I don't know what happened to them 35 years. They're in there somewhere. But man, if I could do it all over again, I'd be more careful. So Peter says, hey, you need to think about that. Because time goes, you don't get it back. You don't get to rewind. I mean, it's, I was telling somebody young today, I said, let me tell you something, your kids are going to grow up, and they grow up fast, and, and you better do what you're supposed to do now. You do the best you can now. I know I'm born, but sometimes I don't know if I'm growing. But I know I'm alive. I remember growing up, but I only remember that because I'm alive. You know, I don't remember some of the, the growing. You know, I remember some of the things that I went through physically in my life, and, but in my spiritual life. I know I'm born again. I know I'm born again because I'm spiritually alive now. I don't just look back and go, yeah, I remember the day I got saved. No, I'm alive now. I, I want to be, a, but grow, look at verse 18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now, 
see it both now and forever. Amen. Am I giving him glory now? Hello? Hello? I want to give him glory now. Is speeding giving him glory? No. Am I in a hurry? Yes. Did I have an argument? Amy and I, all the way home, you know, we're going to write him a letter and tell him why he shouldn't have pulled us over. See all the people? I mean, hey, man, the dude passed me. I saw him pull out, and I'm thinking, get him. He get him. He comes over and he gets me. I mean, this dude really was gone. Honestly, ask Amy. I told Amy, you know what? We tell everybody else except it's us. When it happens to somebody else, we go, you know, we get real spiritual. We go in spooky voice mode. Oh, you know, God was saving you maybe from a terrible accident. Hey, but when it's me, uh uh-uh. He hates me. The government hates me. They're out to get me. I told Amy, maybe God was keeping us from something. And he let me off free. No ticket. I didn't have to pay for it. I got a free lesson from God. We know we're growing spiritually. Listen, and I'm done. I get quick. We know we're growing spiritually, not because we feel something. But we know we're growing, watch, watch, compared to what we were. I want everything in my life to cause me to grow. John 1, 12, I love the verse. But as many as received him, I received him. I knew when I got saved, I was receiving him. I, was, I remember asking him to save me. That was one of the verses my mother-in-law wrote down for me to read. But as many as received him, to them gave he power. Not my power, his power. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Become the sons of God. See, we always see it as, watch, watch, watch. We always see it as, saved. God sees it as, saved. To become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. In other words, anybody could do it. But when it happens, it's not one and done. Saved, yep. Saved and growing. Peter, last word, but grow. Can you hear him from the cross upside down? Peter, any last words? But grow. He grew, didn't he? Jesus said, you're going to deny me. Oh, come on. No, you are. I prayed for you. Come, Lord, you ought to be talking James and John. Those guys are rascals. You call them sons of thunder. Don't be picking on me. No, Peter, you're going to deny me. I just told you I would never be careful what you say. The power to be what God expects you to be, listen, comes only from God. We have to acknowledge that. You don't get spiritual because you read the Bible. You get spiritual because God gave you a Bible. And he uses that Bible in you to make you grow. If you're paying attention to it. Someone said to me the other day, I appreciate your reading slow. I said, yeah, that, if you did, if you slowed down and read your Bible, you'd grow. You don't even have to pay me for that. You ought to pay me a portion for that. But it's true. If you just read the Bible slower, You'd grow. 
Don't try to grow. Just feed yourself and you'll grow. Hey, remember when you were young, you wanted muscles, but not the ladies, the men. Your mom said, eat your spinach. Be like Popeye. Man, every bite. Yuck. Terrible, you know? Like pulling leaves off the tree and melting them in a pot and eating them. Yeah, but look at Popeye. Who doesn't want to be Popeye? I mean, I'd rather have somebody different than olive oil, but who doesn't want to be Popeye? If we don't grow, verse 17, we will be more able to fall. So Peter says, verse 18, but grow. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I want my life to be a life of hunger, hunger for you, feeding on you, your word, listening to the Holy Spirit, not listening to the world, not listening to the scoffers or those who clamor and rail and complain. I just want to follow you, listen to you, and know you said it's going to happen. You're coming as a thief in the night. That's enough for me. I'm trusting you. Help me grow. Help me grow. Help me to realize the power to grow comes from you. All I got to do is feed on the word, and you'll make me grow. And that's a broken record. I say it. Not enough, but I say it a lot. we got to get in the Bible, read the Bible, read it slow, absorb it, meditate on it, think about it. And God, we don't make ourselves grow. Nothing we can do to do that, but we can read the Bible, and the Bible will grow us. Thank you for that, Holy Spirit. We need to grow. We need to grow. Thank you for your washing. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your renewing. Make us new. Make everything in our life new. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.